Thanks for tuning into What's My Tagline. I'm your host, Carol Flagg. On this show, we put the microphone in front of a variety of industry experts to hear their journeys and learn about their roles in healthcare marketing, sales, social media, and PR. Along the way, as we hear their stories, we'll glean some insights, ideas, and best practices. You can follow me on Twitter at Carol Flagg and learn more about the show on the program page on healthcarenowradio.com. My guest today is Aaron Wawa, a partner and chief marketing officer at Agency 1022, a healthcare and healthcare IT PR firm that's been in the business for the last 15 years and celebrating that milestone anniversary. Aaron, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Aaron, I've known you for a number of years now. And so I, I first of all, I'm, I'm saying I'm remiss not having you on this show. <laughs> show earlier <laughs> because you are uh, not only a PR expert and a marketing effort, a, expert, but a, but a friend, friend as well. So thanks. Thanks for taking your time today. Oh yes. Honored to be on. Thanks. Yeah. Carol. Yeah. So before we sort of, you know, hear your story and, and talk about some things, uh, the first question of all my guests is if you had to describe yourself as a tagline, what would it be? <laughs> yes. I love that you do this and I love that <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> I gave it a little thought and I chose this is how we do it for my tagline. Uh, this is how not, we do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So not just because it's an amazing 90s R&B song yeah. that I'm fond of. But, uh, you know, recently I've, I've realized that it's been helpful to our clients when I explain not just why we do things a certain way, but how, um, you know, without getting in the weeds, but, you know, explaining how a case study comes to life or, you know, how we put together a drip campaign. Uh, that's helped the folks I interact with have a more, you know, holistic understanding of our team's work and they don't have to worry about the specifics along the way. And it's just, it's been coming up a lot recently. So that's kind of been my mantra. So wow, that's yeah. why it's top of mind. It might not win your award for the top three taglines, but I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so interesting, you know, I, I, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a career salesperson and, and, in uh, in all of my, you know, sales books and sales training and, and along the way. And, and, and I, I'm not the world's greatest salesperson, but one of the things they talk about is when you're having a dialogue with a, with a, uh, with a potential client or customer, you, you do ask a lot of how questions and not why questions, you know, because why mm -hmm. questions can maybe put them on the defensive or make them have to explain themselves and versus, you know, asking That's how right. questions and, and coming at things from a how approach is a very, is a great way to, to really open up a dialogue and, and the communication lines. Mm hmm. That's right. That's right. And it just I think it just really helps, you know, have a very clear understanding. We assume so much that everybody knows, you know, all the ins and outs. And like I said, without getting too in the weeds with folks, I just really think it helps bring some clarity when we describe, you know, it's so in our second nature for us, but they don't necessarily understand all the parts and pieces, you know, right. some of the things that, that we do and how we do it. So. Right. Right. So for our yeah. listeners out there, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and how you got to be at agency 1022. Yeah. Yeah. My, I've always been in marketing, but that does not surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my healthcare journey actually started in, in pharmacy before oh. I received a marketing degree. I worked for a pharmacy while in college and it was, um, we had contracts with um, skilled nursing facilities and ALS all throughout the state of Florida. As you can imagine, we have quite a few in Florida. Sure, <laughs> and, uh, sure. So here, in, here started, in Arizona too. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I started as a tech, as a kid, and I just kind of moved my way up through this, you know, it was um, owned by Heartland Healthcare at the time. Oh. So went into uh, customer service and then kind of took on this quality assurance role. So I was, I was too young to be doing it, but I was traveling to these different, um, you know, nursing homes and uh, assisted living facilities throughout the state and meeting with, you know, the directors of nursing and, and all that good stuff. So totally unrelated to marketing, but it, it was my little taste of, you know, healthcare and, and working with yeah. people who are involved with patient care. Um, and that was, you know, early 20s, it was before I even got out of college. I was too young to rent my car to drive around <laughs> to <laughs> visit the, the different, you know, directors um, at the site. So, but it was, it was a good little taste. But after I got my marketing degree, that was kind of my first foray into, I got a marketing job right out of school. And it was a great first 
marketing job out of school, um, a small company, and they make um, uh, medical massage beds, like modalities that pain management oh, sure. clinics or yeah. doctors use. So we did, that company did about, I don't know, upwards of 50 trade shows a year. And I was responsible wow. for the event management. So not just the logistics, but, you know, the, the marketing of it, right? Pre, during, post show. And it was, uh, it was busy, but I got to touch a lot of things there. So that was fun. That was a good time. And then after that, I was there a couple of years. I started with, um, I took a, a marketing manager role with a medical transcription company. And that was another fun role because it was a small company, but they were in growth mode. They were looking to be acquired and they were, you know, they really wanted to grow at a fast pace. So I was, you know, this one woman marketing show <laughs> that got to touch a lot of things. And it was just a good time working with, you know, their sales team. And, you know, I, I laugh looking back. I think we were doing account-based marketing before it was really even a term. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so right. Really, I mean, these are, you know, these are long sales cycles. These are, you know, high dollar. So, you know, it wasn't just a little one-off type, you know, outreach when we were doing our marketing. So we'd come up with some creative ways you know, to send material to different stakeholders at the hospitals and, you know, send them gifts or do little touch points along the way. But, um, you know, I kind of had my hands in everything there because, like I said, I was just a one-person show. So, you know, managed email campaigns, mail, events, all that good stuff. And uh, while there, I met Beth. Ah. And uh, the company that I was with, um, you know, we were looking for some help with writing and content because, you know, one person can't do it all, right? Right, right. And I met that there at the time, but um, very quickly, like I said, we were, you know, the company wanted to be sold and we were acquired by Nuance. And uh, so that happened before we, I even got a chance to do any work with Beth. We didn't uh, oh, get to write funny. any projects or anything together. Yeah, yeah. But that, you know, kind of opened the door and just started a relationship there. Right. And right. I did some freelance work and, you know, some marketing gigs here and there and just wanted to kind of figure out my next step and um, went on to get my MBA. And then I, uh, Beth and her team at the time reached out to me and that was kind of how we started together. Um, you know, they knew that I was doing my own thing and asked if I wanted to join and I gladly accepted. Yeah. yeah. And I've been with, you know, 1022 ever since. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. for our listeners, uh, but anyway, so, so uh, we're talking about Beth Friedman, who is the founder of Agency 1022, which we, we shortened to just eight, 1022, but um, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. no worries. Every, every, everybody knows her as Beth. She's, she's, a, she's, a, she's a wonderful person. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and, I know. I... And a great place <laughs> to land. So, you, you know, you, so you were on the pharma side and, 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 and actually working with, you know, obviously clearly, you know, the nursing homes and whatnot is, you know, arguably, you know, one of the most vulnerable uh, uh, populations in healthcare. And then uh, you went into the trade show and then medical transcription is a startup that got bought out by Nuance. Nuance obviously bought, I think, a number of medical transcription companies. And then you land uh, in PR. So you so you brought this sort of, um, you know, wealth of experience across very divergent areas of healthcare. That's interesting. Yes, and it's been it's been interesting, you know, with my role at 1022 and, and kind of becoming comfortable with my place, right? Because I, you know, marketing by education, MBA with an emphasis in marketing, and then I land in a in a PR agency. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but you know, it's it's been great because over the years, you know, we've I've partnered with Beth Friedman to kind of divvy up the agency and and complement, you know, where she's strong on the PR side and media relations and offer some of the marketing services that, you know, weren't there prior. So that's been fun to kind of build it out slowly. I mean, we still, you know, PR is our core, right? Writing, thought leadership, content, media relations is, you know, our primary focus. But to offer, you know, the ancillary marketing services has been uh, a great time. It's sure, been, sure. It's been a lot of fun. So 1022, as I, as I said in my, my opening, uh, you're celebrating your 15-year anniversary this month. Congratulations. I mean, uh, that predates uh, my start in, in, in healthcare with the HITECH Act. So um, 
uh, Beth, Beth, Beth has been at it this for a while as a, as a view. So uh, 15 years is a, is, is a, a great achievement. Uh, you had mentioned in an email to me and I, I pulled these bullet points up that it, you were, you've been reflecting, I guess, uh, on the That's last right. 15 years and, and quote some of the, these lessons learned in, in that time, time frame. And keep in mind that we're, we're talking about, um, you know, 2005 to 2020, which you know, obviously you've seen some incredible, some good and some bad seismic shifts in healthcare. So what, mm-hmm. what, what are those you know, lessons learned, those core lessons learned over the last 15 years uh, that you can s- sort of share with our audience? Right. We came up, you know, we sat down and, and kind of said, you know, well, first we high fives, right? It's, yeah, know, of course. It's a huge. <laughs> but, <laughs> but after that, you say, well, what happened, right? You know, did, what did have you just did a, Snoop, did a Snoopy you know, dance. <laughs> <laughs> right. What have we been doing? And, and, you know, what do we have to show for it, right? So we just sat down and, and kind of jotted this list of, you know, could we come up with 15 lessons? And they, they came very easily to us. It was kind of a fun little exercise, but I won't bog you down with the 15, but I plucked a few of them out oh, of there. Oh, so uh, you, I see. So you came up with 15 <laughs> lessons learned in 15 years. Got it. <laughs> yes, 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 we did. Yeah. We, you, guys and, need um, to do a, you, know, you guys need to do a white paper around that or an article or something. <laughs> we should. I know yeah, it's not yeah. a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it wasn't laborious at all. It was actually kind of fun, but, um, but no, I, I plucked a couple out to share. Um, one of the ones that, that I chose was being proactive and you know sometimes things are are very obvious and and come across as no brainers but you know being a consultancy uh it's it's interesting because you start this relationship with folks right and and they've done things a certain way but at the same time you know they've hired us to come in and and present ideas and it's always a fine line of you know gaining trust you know, establishing a good relationship and understanding where they're coming from and hearing them out, but they're really not paying us to just nod and right. agree to all of their ideas. Right. So, you know, we've, we definitely try to make it a point and we've learned the hard way, you know, there's been some learning experiences where, you know, we run with something that maybe in our gut, it, it didn't feel right. So we've learned over the years that, you know, we bring ideas to them. And we show them the new ideas and new solutions. And even if they don't stick, it just shows that we've done our homework. It gives us a starting point, right? So the being proactive piece has been, I think, a, a big piece for us over the years. So be proactive. You know, it, it, not all ideas are, are going to work and be good ideas, but, but just actually having more ideas is better than, than, than less, right? Yeah, it just makes it more fun. You know, we usually do biweekly calls with clients and I always make it a point, you know, when we're on that phone call, there's already, you know, I've already brainstormed something and it might not stick, like I said, but just always coming to them with, here's an idea that I think we could do. Should we build that out? And just always have that, you know, in your back pocket and kind of just going a little bit above and beyond to be proactive, I think. Um, you know, goes a long way. Yeah. Sh- shows a client that you're always thinking about them, not just right on that call or something, right? Yeah. Or, or, ten, yeah, or 10 minutes beforehand. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> Scrambling. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. That's not. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And, you know, obviously we're, we're all living in strange times. You know, yeah. all of us are talking about coronavirus constantly, but, you know, that was an example of when all of this first happened and it was, you know, late March, early April, and we said, you know, what can we do to be proactive for clients? You know, it's not a good time to be marketing or selling, right? So how can we serve them or how can they serve their community? And we jumped at, you know, there were a few organizations that were posting you know, like free, helpful COVID-19 resources. Right? Yeah, we, we were one of them. Yes, absolutely. You guys yeah. were one of them, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we wanted to jump on that to say, okay, let's compile a quick, you know, database, right? You know, you guys doing it, Chime, Class, Showmark, and, you know, just pulling from clients what they had put together and just, you know, pushing that out and getting it out for them without them really having to even think about it, that an eyelash, you know, <laughs> right. do any work on their end, just being proactive to try to help is one thing. 
All right. And so you cherry picked a few more. What was the next one you cherry picked? I did. Out of of your 15. (laughs) It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to pick just a couple, Uh, but you know, we don't have all day, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, Um, this would, it would be a, it would be a, it would be a three hour podcast versus a, you know, a a, a 30 minute. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I don't want to put everyone to sleep. I'd like to keep them listening. (laughs) I think, um, I know another one I, I pulled was, was keep your message simple. Yeah. You know, we tell clients that with just, you know, a lot of, of the times, as you know, it's, it's sophisticated technology. It can be complex. It can sometimes trickle down and then the messaging becomes complex. So we try to keep it simple. But beyond that, for us even, it kind of wraps into my little tagline of this is how we do it. Keeping the marketing speak simple too right. has really been helpful because, you know, we all work in healthcare, we use acronyms every day, but I've found the same to be true for the labels and terms that we use in marketing. And, you know, sometimes our contacts aren't a director of marketing or a VP of marketing. It might be another, you know, executive member on the team or someone else who just doesn't use that content or media thought leadership, you know, those words just don't roll off and maybe there's some confusion. So trying to just be as concise you know, to simplify or, you know, on the other end to explain it, <laughs> that this right, is how it works, right. this is how we do it, right, to keep things simple. Um, you know, and I, I think um, we, we tried to do that quite a bit, even more so than ever with, you know, going back to just this world that we're living in right now mm, right. with messaging and, and working with clients on their outreach in the last 60 days. It's been, you know, let's keep it as simple as we can. And, you know, we talked about how if the true intention is to help, you know, your services or, you know, your expertise, if it can assist, it's a great path to follow, but let's keep the message simple and provide value, right? So just kind of (laughs) peeling it all yeah. yeah, I think that's, a, that's such an interesting point. You know, um, I'm in Arizona, you're in Florida. We're obviously in two states that are seeing um, an, a dr- dramatic rise uh, right now um, in, right. In, in COVID cases. And, you know, I know that there is, for lack of a better term, it's not my term, but people talking about, you know, COVID fatigue, you know, you know, COVID 24 seven and recycle and all that messaging, you know, if people are, are really fatigued by it and with obvious reasons, and obviously it's going to keep, keep on going because we're, we're still in phase one of this pandemic. I mean, we're not even, we're not even, we haven't even really seen a, a lull, a lull per se. Uh, so I, I would think that that messaging and keeping it simple and focused and lasered would be even more critical right now just because of this, again, 24-7 COVID messaging that we're, that we're in right now. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, we have someone on our team who manages social media, and she's been very sensitive to that. You know, she'll even yeah. push back on, on us internally to say, you know, we probably need to think about other things that we want to focus, even if it's feel-good news or something, you know, right. instead of just this constant, you know, it's, it, one can only take so much, right? Right. <laughs> of, right? Of all of what we're seeing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. She's probably like, do I, I, I don't really, she probably doesn't want to use those hashtags anymore. <laughs> COVID-19, yeah, COVID-19. Yeah. You know, it's just like, That's- it's like, like really, can we, you know, make, can we, can we, can we put craft a tweet or, you know, a, a social media That's message exactly that is right. not about COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah well, exactly right. and, and things like that are kind of, you know, are, are getting, 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 getting some attention, you know what I mean? In the sense of, mm-hmm. um, you know, you're at any given day, you know, you look through your email and all the, you know, all the subject lines have that in there. It's the ones that don't talk about COVID that actually I like kind of catch my eye, you know what I mean? Right. Versus, That's you know, right. perhaps in March where everything COVID was catching my eye. Now it's like, Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So give us one more. Okay. One I'll more tip. One, one. one more Aaron tidbit. Yes. Uh, this one is another top of mind because we, we run into it quite a bit and we feel like we've, we've learned that, you know, it's been a good learning lesson to stay in your lane. And that can mean so many things. But for us, it's just knowing our area of expertise and recommending other marketing or PR pros for the rest. Right. So, you know, we've learned this with potential customers and just 
the technology or service that they're offering isn't a good fit uh, for us, you know, based on whoever they're selling to. Uh, you know, we don't like to make things work. We are very transparent and candid if we first meet someone and realize, oh, you know what, it's kind of, it's kind of out of our sweet spot. It's not our comfort zone. You know, it's just it's a little bit too far off and we wouldn't do the best job. So it's that piece. It's kind of two pronged, you know, just the potential audience and, and customer we would be serving. And then also just our, you know, our area of expertise, period. Like we learned it with, let me say, like SEO, you know, years ago, because <laughs> we have been in business 15 years. But, you know, years ago we could get by, you know, SEO was still Right along. Oh, I know. I know what you're talking. I mm-hmm. like in 2009, 2010, we started. 2011, I knew SEO, you know, but I don't know mm-hmm. it anymore. Right. I do not, like. That's right. I know it yeah. just, like so. No, much. it's absolutely. You know, our web designer, we, <laughs> right? You know, right. he would build a site, and that was just an afterthought, or it was one of our checkboxes yeah, yeah. as the page was being drafted and and built, right? But now we couldn't hold a torch yeah. to what our right. SEO partner does and you know we've learned that over the years to just stay in our lane you know either build or buy right but just to understand what our strengths are and to know if it's something we can own and manage whether it's a a client that we could you know properly serve or it's a service that we could offer and you know in the best way possible and you know that that's happened recently too just with everything going on in the last couple months we had a few companies reach out to us you know it's so like a guerrilla PR marketing campaign for an antimicrobial adhesive, that's right. not going to be that's, a good fit. It's, not, for not, us, in, it's right? not in your lane, right? Right. Well, right. it's not in our lane. But then one that is a relatively new startup, but they are, you know, they have a technology where they're able to help hospitals monitor their staff remotely, like their revenue cycle staff, that's in our lane. So that's a fit. So it's just learning that along the way. And like I said, you know, none of these are earth shattering, but <laughs> it's just an interesting process of reflection to, you know, to really see what we've learned and yeah. been fun ride for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, and this, you know, this, this last point that you're making that, that, that really being candid and honest with what, you know, our potential new business and clients for you, I mean, that, you know, to, to, to be honest and frank and open and, and have that dialogue with them that, Hey, we can't do the kind of job that you deserve that karma that, that comes back and, and, in, in, you know, and, and pays off in other ways that, that good mm-hmm. karma. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We found that to be true and we just feel good doing it. Right. I mean, we're, rather than saying, no, we think we could, you know, let's, let's talk about it. Let's break it out. It's, we feel better with just the honesty and being an open book and the person on the other end definitely appreciates that because nobody wants their time wasted. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Well, Aaron, it has been so fun chatting with you today. Believe it or not, we're, we're just about out of time. I, I think I'm going to, from going forward, I think I'm going to have everybody say what, you know, tell me what your tagline is, but it has to be a, a song it's related to a song, a song in the nineties, yes. in the nineties. No, in the nineties. I love the nineties. I mean, that, that was my decade. I love the nineties. <laughs> I do as well. You can play it softly in the background to get it going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or just, <laughs> this is how we do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so um, before, 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 we, before we sort of end, end our conversation, um, t- tell our listeners where to find out more information about you and 1022. Yes, yeah. You could visit our website, 1022PR. That is T E N spelled out <laughs> number two two T R dot com. We like to make it a little bit uh, tricky, but not too tricky. And uh, we have our our uh, social handles. We have uh, you know our our different uh, LinkedIn and Twitter and all that good stuff is um is on our site on our about page. So folks great. could learn more about me or anybody else on the team. Oh, great, great. Well, I I, I encourage uh, any anybody in the vendor community listening to this to, to reach out and, and check them out. They're, they're a great agency in business for 15 years for a reason. Erin, thank you so much and stay safe and healthy in Florida. Thanks, Carol. You as well. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks. You can learn more about the show at healthcarenightradio.com and be sure to follow me on Twitter at Carol Flagg or connect with me on LinkedIn. Until next time, I'm Carol Flagg and I want to know what's your tagline?